Welcome to Live and Local Anoka 2023. We're here at the Rum River Art Center with a great show coming up for you. We've got stories on Crown Bakery, our marketplace, front porch quilts, plus some great interviews from local community members here. So stick around because Live and Local starts right now. Welcome to Live and Local Anoka. I'm your host, Seamus Burke. Our first guest today is Susan Yee, founder of the Rum River Art Center, and we are live from the Rum River Art Center right now. Susan, first of all, thank you for uh, letting us into your space here. This is really lovely. Well, you know, we're excited that you guys could actually come here. We've gone to the, the set at QCTV a couple of times, and so I love that you guys can actually see what we do, where we do it. As you can see, it's super clean here. <laughs> It's organic, it's lived it, in. Exactly. So, I, first of all, I, I want to uh, ask you about these paintings uh, that are right behind us here. They're extremely striking, got great vibrant colors. Uh, tell yeah. us a little more about them. Well, you know, um, I co-founded the Art Center with my husband, Larry Weinberg, and this is his artwork. He's the executive director here, and these happen to be um, from his time in Spain and Mexico. Wow. He never has time to do art anywhere now unless he's on vacation and these all are also done um, can be um, black light so they glow in the dark wow. and it's it's pretty cool when you see it that way yeah we actually did we did a two-part uh, pair of uh, stories on the on some of these paintings you can see that on our YouTube channel they are really quite cool so thank you for sharing that with us yes. um, I hear you have an art-a-thon fundraiser coming up this Friday can you tell us a little bit more yes. about that? So our Artathon, this is our, I think it's our fourth year. It's 24 hours and it kicks off on Friday night with our kids art night where parents, you had to make a reservation, it sells out every time, but from 6 to 8 p.m. kids will do an art project. And then we have a self-portrait with Suzanne Becker. We have uh, Bach to Rock, we are going to have DJ and karaoke, so if wow. anybody wants to be here at 8 to 10, sing a little bit, dance a little bit, we're here. Uh, we have a glow-in-the-dark paint night, and for all of you lucky people, we just added three more spots. It was sold out, and we configured it so we could add three more spots. Um, and the final thing on the um, Artathon, which I think is really cool, is at 8 o'clock we're going to do a raku firing outside. So it's an uh, old Japanese technique, and they, they are building a, basically, it's like a brick oven outside. Sure. They use a blowtorch at 1,800 degrees to fire the clay. Then it gets put and cooled down in a, a drum with different additives to give texture and color. And then it gets cooled off. And it takes about an hour and a half for each. And it's different than, you know, just throwing it in the kiln, getting it fired. And I mean, 1,800 degrees. And it's pretty cool. You see them with the tongs picking up the pieces, putting in the kiln, and then taking it out, you know, putting it into the, uh, the additives, the glazing, yeah. and then when it gets cooled off. Um, so it's really fun. That sounds incredible. Yeah. I've, I've, never, I've never even heard of that. Yeah. That sounds really interesting. You know, most people don't see it. And, you know, like I said, the Artathon, I think it's our fifth year. Um, the Art Center only does two fundraisers a year. And the Artathon is one, and I have to be thankful. We have the Anoka Lions, Bach de Rock, Crumble Cookies, Domino's Pizza of Anoka, the Ham Lake Chamber, Village Bank. You know, they help make donations and sponsor. So we can give back to the community by doing lots of free classes. Uh, you know, we have free yoga class, free family art day this weekend, and we also do those once a month. That sounds great. Yeah. So speaking of classes, I know you have a lot of classes coming up here in April. Can you tell us about some of those? Yeah, you know, uh, one of the things we do, we we're talking about clay, we do wheel throwing. We have a wheel throwing single classes. As a matter of fact, there is one on Saturday. Uh, we have paint classes. We have a glass uh, mosaic class coming up. Um, anime class. So if your kids love anime, those always fill up. And it's, and it's a great way to get kids still involved. Right. Yeah. That's great. That sounds excellent. And, and uh, 
speaking of uh, fun things for kids, I know you do uh, some summer camps and things like that. Um, it doesn't feel like it right now, but summer's coming up. What, what do you got going on this well, summer? Well, I have to tell you, you know, our summer camps are already 75% sold out. No kidding. So if you want your kids to go to summer camp, you better look now. But we have wheel throwing. We have painting. We have one that parents love, and we're actually doing it with uh, DNR to get your kids outside. Um, and it's the one parents love because your kids are outside all day. So when you come and get them, they are tired because they've probably walked a few miles. Uh, we have, like I said, uh, we have hand building pottery. We have painting. We have drawing. We have Harry Potter. We have, uh, I think there's a Star Wars camp. We have dragon camp. We have um, so many camps, my mind is going blank here. Uh, <laughs> polymer clay where they make like little miniature clay figurines that are so cute because oh, you know awesome. who doesn't like a miniature <laughs> who doesn't like a miniature that's great and um so before the show here you you actually took us out out the north side of the building and you showed yes. us a pretty uh, excellent uh sculpture. huge sculpture yes. I, I, i'd be curious to hear more about that and uh the community garden here at the rum river Arts well Center. you know last summer uh, one of the things that I, I think that everybody realizes as you start to age, you think, what have I done? What am I doing to give back to my community? So I was fortunate that with Anoka County, I was able to get a grant to start a community garden. So we tested it last year. It's on my rooftop here. And so we planted a variety of vegetables and herbs to see if it would work, number mm -hmm. one. And it was awesome because it did because, you know, there's no bunnies on top of the roof. Right. There's no <laughs> deer, you know, trying to get your vegetables. We had volunteers that donated seeds. We had volunteers that uh, helped us to plant. And it was a success, so we're going to continue it this year. And so members of the community, once the, the garden starts to produce, will be able to come and get free vegetables. And with the sculpture we're talking about, I think, as, again, as the world, we um, planted a bee-friendly garden. So I found this amazing local artist named Lindy and asked him to make me a sculpture. Well, not only did he make me a sculpture, it's like 12 feet high. <laughs> it's got bees on it. It's Pretty got amazing. sunflowers on it. Um, and it just, you know, it's part, it's part of the puzzle. Uh, you know, not only are we an art center, we're a community art center. You know, we want to do good in the community. We want people to see that it only takes one or two people to get things going. And if you can come here and you drive by and you see this sculpture and it says Bee Garden, you know that, okay, they're helping. It's just, you know, a four-foot plot. If you can come here to get free vegetables, because you know what? Every family should be able to have vegetables. Right. You know, and that's the one thing. If you go to the grocery store, it's the most expensive thing, and it's, right. the, best, it's the best thing for you. Um, you know, we have free yoga classes that we do on uh, Thursdays because you, you need to move. You need to exercise. Well, Susan, you guys are a, a great resource for the community. Anoka is very lucky to have you, and thank you for coming on Live and Local today. It's well, been a pleasure. You know, thank you for having us, and I, I love all the guests that you have here because I've partnered in with every single one of them with some kind of a project, so it's amazing amazing community. Well, thank you very much, Susan. Uh, we're going to tell you now about a great business in Anoka that is aiming to uh, create zero waste. That's our marketplace. Let's hear about them right now. A new zero waste retail store has opened up in Anoka right across from City Hall. I met up with the owner of our marketplace, Michelle Austin Dean, to learn more about what her store stands for and what zero waste is all about. So I chose my name, Our Marketplace. Uh, I was inspired by the five R's of zero waste. To refuse things that you don't need, to reduce the things that you do need, to reuse, so you should reuse items that you can, to recycle all of the things that you cannot refuse, reduce, or reuse. And then the fifth R is to rot the rest, which basically means to compost. So a play on the five R's of zero waste, I also started what I consider the R5 I have five nonprofits that we donate a portion of all sales to. And I let my customers decide when they come in who they would like their sales dollars to contribute to. So three of those are local nonprofits, um, the Anoka Royal Ambassador Program, Rum River Art Center, 
and Hope for Youth. One of them is a local nonprofit. It's uh, the Minnesota Sustainable Farming Organization, and they help farmers learn how to farm more sustainable. And then the last one is Sunflowers for Peace, which helps with the citizens of Ukraine. The five R's to our marketplace is reflected in each product sold, meaning zero waste is achieved from the manufacturing all the way to the product getting in your hands. We have common household items. We have um, different liquids that you buy by the ounce in a container that you bring yourself, uh, or you can use one that I have here. Then we also have other items that are made out of natural fibers instead of plastic fibers. So for example, a bamboo toothbrush or a wood-based um, dish brush, um, just anything that's more natural-based instead of plastic that will naturally break down uh, in the earth. Uh, when I bring products in, I really want to make sure that it's a more earth-friendly option, uh, that it's something that is economical to the average day buyer. If it's something that I would not be willing to pay for, then it's not something that I'm gonna bring into my store. And then lastly, I try to bring in products that are locally made. So I have a corner of my store where people can bring in things that they make um, and then I help them sell that. Um, so for example, I have like these tote bags that are made from a local maker. What I would really love uh, to see for as my as my store grows is, is to really expand this section of local makers. Local is sustainable. I would really love to have a large section that's almost like an in-store physical Etsy location. I always love to meet people in person. Uh, I'm in my store five days a week. Um, um, I'm closed on Mondays and Sundays but open every other day. Um, I'm across the street from City Hall in Anoka. Uh, I'm also, um, you could reach me through my website, which is ourmarket-place.com, or you could also find me on um, social media. Our Marketplace provides an essential zero waste option to not only the city of Anoka, but the world at large. Offering options and following the practices of zero waste will benefit in the reduction of waste across the world, and is Michelle's number one reason for opening Our Marketplace. I really started to realize how much waste that we produce and I was a little distraught when I started to learn a little more about plastic specifically and how bad plastic is for the environment. Every piece of plastic that's been made still exists. It can only be recycled 10 times at the most. We have five islands of plastic floating in our oceans. The largest one is twice the size of Texas. And if we don't do something to change our buying habits, it's just going to get worse. So I wanted to have a place where I could shop uh, to minimize my impact. And it's my goal to help educate our community and to be a resource where other people can buy without single-use plastic. Welcome back. I am here now with Austin Oren of the Anoka Police Department. Austin, thank you so much for being here with yeah. us on Live and Local. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So you are a cops officer with the Anoka Police Department. Can you yeah. tell me, uh, first of all, what, what 
COPS stands for and yeah. then what that entails. Yeah, so COPPS um, is our Community Oriented Policing and Problem Solving Unit. So uh, truly we have kind of, we like to say, three main functions. So the first one being we work a lot with our rental properties. So with tenants, property managers, owners, um, we really want to be that liaison between those just to ensure that everyone in Anoka has a safe, comfortable place to live. So that's kind of one of our main focuses is, is really working within our rental community to make sure that uh, they have a, that safe, comfortable place. Um, one of our other functions is uh, liaison with the businesses. So downtown, um, some of our outskirt businesses even, mm -hmm. uh, we really like to have that relationship so that we can get in there, introduce ourselves, and just really have that good, solid working relationship. We find that that is a lot easier to work with than showing up simply when, when something happens. So, I'm sure. Yeah, so getting that, that early relationship built. Um, and then our last function, and kind of one of our biggest ones, is our community events. So we are really big on, on getting out, getting into our community, and, and just interacting with them um, as much as we can. And uh, whether it's a formal event that we hold or simply getting out and, and walking around downtown. So. That's excellent. So that, that's all, uh, all important stuff, yeah. all good work. Um, I'm curious to know specifically about, um, you mentioned community events. I yeah. know you have a safety fair coming up in June. Can you tell yes. me a little bit about that? Yeah, so our safety fair is scheduled right now for June 27th. Um, so basically what our safety fair is, is it's really a chance to get a lot of our community partners together. Um, whether that's some of our public safety partners, um, some of our other resources within the community, just bring them together and have kind of that one-stop shop for all of our families in Anoka to come out, bring the kids, uh, have a good time. Like I said, we offer a lot of different resources that they're able to kind of explore and get a, a additional info on. And it's a great time for the kids to come out, see the squad cars, meet yeah. the officers, and, and like I said, just, just really build that strong police department and community relations. So right. That's usually a, a pretty fun event for us as officers to work. I'm sure, I'm sure it's nice to, you know, like you said, get a little face time yes. with the community and that you, of course you are, but really feel like you're a part of their lives. And Absolutely. That's, that's excellent. Yeah. Um, I know that August is also a busy month for you. You have uh, Night to Unite, you have Cookout with a Cop, and uh, some other events. Can you tell us yeah. of, uh, what's coming up in August here? Yeah, so August, the first Tuesday of August is National Night Out, or uh, Night to Unite. So that's kind of the uh, everywhere, uh, usually participates in, in some form or another. Um, and at the Anoka Police Department, we're very big with National Night Out. So. Um, if you have a block party that you have scheduled, we'd love to know about it so we can stop by. We have a lot of officers out that night just, I mean, stopping by as many different uh, block parties, as many different neighborhoods as we can. Uh, last year we were able to get out to, to almost all of our block parties in, in town here. So it's a great event, again, for our officers just to, to truly go out and meet the community uh, where, where they are. Awesome. Um, you know, I like to say that I, I can't be everywhere at once, unfortunately, but we really like to get out and hear what those, those uh, issues that are affecting our, our residents are and this is that great opportunity for us that's great um, to hear yeah that cookout with the cops is probably our biggest event in the summer um, and it, it really does allow us to, to share a meal with our community to sit down uh, one of our captains usually does our, our cooking of uh, the, the the hot dogs and, and burgers um, but it really gives us that opportunity to just sit down have that conversation um, and really just get to know our community get to know the needs that our community has um, and what they expect of us as a police department Great, excellent. Now I know that the uh, the Anoka Police Department invests a lot in the Police Explorers program. Actually, uh, Billy and I learned a little bit yeah. about that. We were on a, a really interesting and fun shoot uh, last summer. Uh, can you tell us, uh, for those who don't know, uh, what the Police Explorers are and, uh, and what uh, what they do for our community? Yeah, so I'm actually our lead advisor for our Police Explorer post. Uh, so an explorer is someone between the ages of 14 and 20 um, who maybe just has uh, somewhat of an interest in law enforcement, wants to see uh, what we do or maybe dive a little deeper or maybe someone who knows that this is what they want to go into um, so it really gives us the opportunity to, to introduce them to law enforcement let them know some of the different aspects of our job we bring them in and I think the day that you guys were out we uh, did a, a traffic stop scenario and That's right. uh, so you got to see them kind of go through and it, it really is a great opportunity for us to uh, build that community connection and, and get some interest uh, in these kids and you know maybe they do it and yes this is something that I want to do or maybe they do it and maybe it's not something they want to do so right. it's that really beneficial um, kind of first look in 
Um, and the great part is they volunteer a lot of hours in our community. So this last year, um, it was hundreds of hours that our explorers donated working different events, uh, the Halloween parade and things like that. So um, it truly is a benefit for the city and um, really it's a benefit for our officers too, getting to see these kids go through the program. Some of them go on to become officers. Uh, it really is uh, cool for us to see that progression as well. So. Yeah, it, it is It is a pretty interesting and unique program. And if you haven't seen uh, our story on that, uh, check that out on our YouTube channel. It, it, it's, it's a great look at that program. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah, we're taking our explorers down to Rochester for their state conference here at the end Excellent. of April. So very nice. Um, very exciting time for those guys. Excellent. So. I've got one last question for you here, Austin. Yeah. Uh, we talked about a lot of different events here, a lot of great work you're doing in the community. Where can people uh, go to find out more about the events and programs we talked about here today? Yeah, so we post a lot on our Facebook. Um, so if you follow the Uncle Police Department on Facebook, uh, whether it's these more scheduled events like uh, safety fair or cookout with the cops, uh, we do a lot of pop-up events too, whether it's cops and cones or popsicles in the park. Uh, so we really rely on our Facebook page uh, and our city website to get that information out. And like I said, I encourage everyone to come out, stop by, say hi, and enjoy a popsicle or a, an ice cream cone with us. So. Excellent. Well, you heard it. Give them a follow. And uh, Austin, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. And now we're going to learn about front porch quilts in Anoka. Let's take a look at that story right now. Spring is in the air, and so are the patterns and notions over at the Front Porch Quilt Shop. Well, we opened up here officially on December 31st, and our other location, our original location, we are in Walker, Minnesota, which we have been there for over 17 years. So um, I guess this is not a new gig for us, just a new location. We're pretty excited about that. With a well-lit shop to see all those fabric colors, off-street parking, and with 17 years of owning a quilt shop in Walker, Jana and her husband decided to open their second shop right here in Anoka. Well, our focus is on um, quilting and sewing, um, you know, fabrics to make quilts, make um, aprons, clothing if people choose to. Um, and the whole teaching, we want to get people excited. We're trying to get the younger generation involved. Um, so we are expanding in our new location with a um, retreat room which we will be offering um, classes in open sewing. Um, so we are just looking to get the community involved. They are currently adding a retreat room for those local quilting guilds and will offer classes once the room is completed. So groups can come back together again to create, learn, and sew some beautiful art. Um, so we have the front third of this is on the retail space and then the back two thirds of this is where we're going to have the retreat room. We also, we're gonna have a little man cave area. So for the women who um, maybe their husbands are driving them or the husband has to come with or, you know, so we'll have a space for them to sit and enjoy th their time peacefully, quietly, leaving their wives alone when they shop. And then um, we also have another space for um, in-house sewing, which we'll have a couple of machines going there as well. And the best part of owning a quilt shop? You know, I have to say my favorite part really is our customers. Our customers, you know, we have awesome customers. They come in, um, they're looking for help, or maybe they just want to browse around themselves, and it's fun to um, speak with them and talk with them. And um, I learn a lot from them as well, different ways, um, different colorways, different fabrics to put together. So I have to, I have to say it's completely our customers. And the customers are from far, and near because they do Facebook lives, interacting with customers, giving tips and recommendations for products. Um, yes, the, commun the community, as they're finding out about us, have been very welcoming. So um, we're, you know, super excited for that. And it seems like we get um, new people that discover us every day. So from their first store and now the Anoka store, you'll find anything quilting related. So head to the Front Porch Quilt Shop for your supplies and show off those different techniques, improve those sewing skills, and go create. And we 
are back here at the Rum River Art Center. With me right now is Cheryl Kanapik of the Waste Reduction and Recycling Board of Anoka. Cheryl, thank you so much for coming on the show here today. Hi, you're welcome. And um, can you give us a little bit of information about the uh, Anoka Waste Reduction and Recycling Board and, and uh, how many members there are, what they do, things like that? Okay, yes, we have seven volunteer members and we oversee the residential recycling and waste reduction program that is funded by the SCORE grants. We implement recycling and reuse programs. We negotiate the um, hauler fees. We organize recycling events and we provide educational opportunities for um, the residents. And we have a televised meeting coming up on April 12th. That's right. Where we'll have a virtual tour and that will be a tour of the Eureka Recycling Facility. And it'll show the process of what happens when um, your recyclables are picked up by ACE. And I've seen that um, virtual tour already, and it's really interesting to see what happens and the amount of recycling that goes to these facilities. So we really encourage everyone to watch our meeting that night, um, or you can watch it on QCTV. Yes, that's right. We're going to be carrying that meeting. Uh, that's a first for us, and we're really happy to be doing that for you. That's, that's great information for residents to know. Um, and can you tell me, does the board have any specific goals for 2023? Uh, yep, we just finished our um, 2023 goals, and one of them is to re increase, reduce, or increase um, opportunities for reuse. And we're going to have an all-city garage sale this year. And we also have um, a uh, shoe drive going on at Peterson Shoes. Um, we also want to enhance our outreach to um, the community by being present at some events and offering reduce and um, waste reduction um, type opportunities and information. And another is to reduce customer fees at our um, recycling events. And we're also going to have new this year a curbside recycling event for people that might not be able to get to um, the drive up events. Excellent. And you, speaking of recycling events, I know the spring recycling event is coming up. Can you tell us a little bit about what to expect and a little bit about the organics drop-off program? Okay. Yeah, our, our annual spring recycling event is Saturday, April 29th from 8 till noon at 501 Pierce Street. And we'll be collecting the usual um, appliances, electronics, tires, um, bicycles, and a whole lot more. And we'll also have um, paper shredding on site. And so if you need information on that, you can look um, on the city website. And then we have the Organics Drop-Off Program. We have 155 participants right now. And anyone that would like to participate can contact the city and you will get a free uh, container and compostable bags and information on how to use them. And then the bags, once they're filled up, can be dropped off at 7th Avenue and Garfield Street. And um, we invite people to participate in that. Excellent, and those are great. I, I, from what I understand, for those some of those harder to recycle items that you can't just you know put in your bin and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll, you mentioned the citywide garage sale. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that and how residents can register for that awesome okay. event? That will be held on Friday and Saturday, May nineteenth and twentieth, and um, suggested times are from nine till five, and you can register on the city website. And this is a free event. Um, registration is open through April 28th, and then after that time, we will compile a list of addresses and a map will be available to the public so that they can see where all these um, garage sales are being hosted. Excellent, and if springtime is technically here, so if you've got spring cleaning, that's a great opportunity mm -hmm, that is. Uh, to, to you know be a part of the community, get out there and uh, get, get some of your clutter cleared out. Right. Um, I've also heard that the uh, board has added a second aluminum can recycling collection benefiting waterfowl for warriors. Can you tell us where the site is and how the city helps, uh, or how that helps the waterfall for water flow for warriors program? At the recycling trailer is at Better Values East Liquor Store at 847 East River Road, and it's near the fence um, in their property. And the funds from that um, collection are used to um, offset some of the expenses for Waterfall for Warriors, which is, um, provides a hunt for veterans and military members. And then each time we pick that up, we weigh the contents or all the cans too, and that goes towards our city um, recycling goal. Excellent. And big holiday coming up. April 22nd is Earth Day. Do you have any uh, suggestions for how residents can uh, celebrate that day? Well, hopefully um, people are making earth-friendly choices all year long, um, but maybe this is an opportunity to try something new, and maybe that becomes a habit for the rest of the year for you. 
Um, some suggestions might be to join the organics program. Um, we've got 155, maybe we can get a few more people with that. Um, I'm a walker and I would like to encourage people when you're walking to take a bag with you and just pick up around your neighborhood and that's something you can do every time you're out. Absolutely. And uh, another thing is to um, look for reuse opportunities. There's a lot of things we buy new that maybe we can go and buy reused or look for places where you can borrow instead of having to buy all the time. Excellent. Cheryl, thank you very much. Uh -huh. That's uh, that's all great to know. We got a lot of information here. Uh, where can residents go to find more about uh, the programs and events we mentioned today? Uh, the city website um, will have information about all the things we've talked about. Um, otherwise, you can call Pam Bowman at the city and it's 763-576-2725 and she can answer a lot of questions too. Excellent. Well, Cheryl, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. So now we are going to learn a little bit about a one of the earth-based businesses that uh, makes our city beautiful. That's Tony's Flowers here in Anoka. Let's find out about them right now. Name something more synonymous with spring than flowers. And in Anoka, there's nobody more synonymous with flowers than Tony. From roses to tulips, carnations to calla lilies, Tony has you covered. So Tony's Flowers has been in the community for 72 years. I am the third owner. Uh, it originally was started by Tony and Harold Fold, and then I purchased it in 2020, and serendipitously, my name is Tony. So uh, we specialize in floral design and plants. We also have some gifts. Uh, we try to do as much local as we can, so the gifts that we have here are soaps and bath bombs and bath salts and candles all made locally. We love this community. That we're, I mean, we're, it's the reason we're here. <laughs> So it, when I took over in 2020, it was just like the coolest experience. I feel like the outpour of support was insane and very humbling, and that has continued. We moved over to this location last January, um, which was a big change for us and for the community since it had been over on East River Road for so long. But there again, it just like, the, the support is crazy. I mean, the, um, I always say people come in as customers and meet as friends. It really feels like, like a family. And it's always a good time for flowers, especially with the never-ending cold and snow we've been experiencing in Minnesota. It really ranges, which is the coolest thing about a flower shop. So we're there for celebrations, prom, um, weddings, anniversaries, birthdays, get well soon, uh, the just because are really fun, and then we do sympathy, a lot of sympathy work, and that's something that Shelly and I are both really passionate about, kind of honoring an entire life through flowers and art is, is, is a way we can give back and feel like we have purpose. Believe it or not, it's possible to have flowers year round, even with a foot of snow on the ground. Tony partners with local growers to bring color when all we see outside is snow. Yes, winter is tough. We do have some partners in Plymouth. Lembush Roses has greenhouses there, so we are still able to get some local blooms, which is awesome. And then starting in the summer, we use local farms. So we've got a couple of Prairie Garden Farms and Beezy's Blooms are two of our favorites. So whether it's prom, weddings, get well soon, or just because, Tony can design something just for you. Tony'sFlowers.net is our website. We are pretty active on Facebook and Instagram. It's just at Tony's Flowers on Instagram and at Tony's Flowers MN on Facebook. We are located at 530 West Main Street, right in the Anoka Shopping Center. Um, and yeah. You can call, email, stop in, any which way. We love it. We are back here at the Rum River Art Center. With me now I have Tessa Sokola from the City of Anoka's Natural Resources Department. You're a natural resources technician, is that correct? Yep. Excellent. So I, uh, I've, I hear that Anoka is a member of Tree City USA. Uh, can you tell me, first of all, uh, what it means to be a member and how, how long we've been with uh, that program? Yeah, so being a Tree City USA means that we're um, every year we're committed to growing and maintaining our urban forest. Um, and investing in our environment. Um, we follow four core standards. This is what we have to do every single year to when we reapply and we have to show that we've done this. Um, so we maintain a tree board which is our park and recreation advisory board. 
Um, and then we have a tree ordinance, and then we're required to spend at least $2 per capita um, on urban forestry, which we well exceed that. Um, and then we, sell, we have to celebrate Arbor Day every year. Excellent. Um, so we are celebrating our 42nd year. 42 years, that is awesome. So what are, what are some of the uh, biggest issues that you're seeing with trees here in the city of Anoka? Some of our biggest issues would be emerald ash borer, um, two-line chestnut borer, and oak wilt. Um, some other issues that we see, have been seeing lately, are drought stress issues, um, and then issues stemming from trees not being planted correctly. Um, so yeah, a lot of issues, like common issues uh, tree, with trees um, start with root health. And sure. so just the part of the tree that we don't see. Right. And so we forget about it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, it's good that you guys are paying attention to that and are, are, and are on that. Um, you mentioned emerald ash borer. I, I, that's something that I have heard of and that I'm sure many people have heard of but might not know uh, exactly what that is. Can you tell us uh, what emerald ash borer is and how it spreads to trees? Yeah, emerald ash borer is a beetle um, and it's most damaging in its larval stage. Um, so it'll feed on the water and nutrient tissues of the wow. water and nutrient conducting tissues of the tree. Sure. And um, so eventually they'll starve the tree out. Um, so once they're infested, they can die in one to three years. Um, and it spreads short distances by flight um, from tree to tree, but it also spreads by moving firewood long distances, ash infested, sure. ash borer infested firewood. So um, how would, what are some of the signs and symptoms of emerald ash borer? How would a, a resident uh, know that, the, I don't know, the tree in their yard, for example, is, is infected? Yeah, a lot of the common signs and symptoms would be like increased woodpecker feeding. Um, and then you'll see suckering on the trees, little branches coming out um, in abnormal places. And we can see S-shaped S galleries underneath the bark if you peel that off. Otherwise, you can see it in little cracks um, and D-shaped exit holes. And then bark flecking um, is another very common symptom. Sure. That's good to look out for. So what, is, um, what does the city do then to manage emerald ash borer? What we're doing to manage emerald ash borer, um, so in 2021, we contracted out a comprehensive tree inventory of all of our trees, um, but they focused on ash trees by picking out ones that they could tell that they were infested. Mm -hmm. um, and then they chose, they noted ones that they thought could be eligible for treatment. Um, so we started removals of ash trees um, in early 2022 in the winter. And then we started injection treatments with an insecticide in the summer of 2022. We treated 186 public ash trees. So that was on wow. boulevards and in parks. Holy cow, mm -hmm. that's a lot of ash trees. So how many uh, have had to be removed because of emerald ash borer? To date, we've removed 345. 345. From public right of ways and wow. parks. Wow, that's, I, that's too bad, but it's good that you're getting them out of there because that's very destructive. Yeah. Um, and then are you replacing those trees that you, that you have to take down? Yeah, we, uh, we have a couple grants with the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, and so we're required with that grant to replant every tree that was removed, so one-to-one. -one. Excellent. That's great. That's great to hear. So it... If you're a homeowner in the city of Anoka and uh, you have an ash tree in your yard, what can you do to protect your tree from emerald ash borer or uh, what, can, what can you do if it's already been infected? Um, so homeowners will have to decide um, whether or not they want to invest in treating their ash trees if it's not too far infested. Um, sometimes they can catch an early infestation and the insecticide will kill off the little larvae that are feeding. Um, and the tree can typically survive from that. Um, but if they don't want to invest in it or if their trees are been infested for a couple years and it's, they, it's not feasible, um, they're going to have to come up with a plan for removal. The issue comes with safety. Right. Um, and they get really brittle and right. they break yeah. easily. It can be pretty falls. dangerous. Yeah. So if, if a homeowner does have to take down their tree, do you have any recommendations on what kind of tree they should be replacing it? And you also mentioned um, that 
you, you deal with issues for trees not being planted correctly. What are some tips to keep those trees happy and healthy? Yeah, so, um, so I will always push for diversification of trees. Um, we, uh, we're dealing with this issue of emerald ash borer. Um, a lot of people can remember Dutch elm disease. Um, mm -hmm. We lost all of the elms from Dutch elm disease because there were so many planted along streets and everywhere. Well, they replanted all those trees with ash trees. <laughs> um, so, so I would say start thinking outside of the box. Um, we have a lot of maples right now. Maybe th think of other things other than maples so we don't um, get in the same issue. But some trees that the city has been planting, um, we've, also, we've been planting some Minnesota natives and non-natives um, also to keep the changing climate in mind. Sure. Um, and to help these trees in the future. Um, so some that we've been planting are ginkgos, Ohio buckeyes, ironwood, yellow woods, Kentucky coffee tree, London plane tree. Um, so the Arbor Day Foundation has a really good tree planting wizard on their website. So you can put in the site, the amount of sunlight, your zones, everything, and it'll just pop up and populate a, you know, some trees for you to plant, which is really nice and easy and you know, like. Sandy soil, we plant this tree if it's sure. shaded or if it's sunny. Um, so that's a really good tool. And then the, depart the DNR, they have a lot of good resources on planting trees. So they have videos and they have uh, pamphlets and they'll, they'll cover, you know, different. We have bare root trees that we can plant. We have containerized trees and we have bald and burlapped. Those are three main forms of planting trees. Um, so yeah, just checking out those places and there's just a lot of resources online too. Excellent, That's, to learn. that is great to know. It's great that you guys are out there uh, helping not only keep the trees healthy, but keeping the city looking so beautiful. And, uh, and speaking of, uh, Arbor Day is coming up on April 28th. What does the city have uh, planned to mark that, uh, that celebration? Um, we are hosting another community tree planting um, this year we are doing it uh, May 6th from 8.30 to 12 p.m. We'll all be meeting at George Enlow Park. And so we'll be planting on the boulevards surrounding the park. So in neighborhoods, uh, we've taken down a lot of ash trees in those um, neighborhoods this year. So we're going to start replanting back there. It's a really fun event um, and it's right in the beginning of spring and we all just want to be outside. Right, um, no kidding. <laughs> we provide a little small light lunch afterwards. Um, last year we had like 50 people show up and it was it was a lot of fun. Excellent. Well, that's yeah. great. Tessa, thank you so much for being here. I hope the ground is uh, defrosted by the time yeah, your tree too. planting <laughs> event comes along. Uh, and now we're going to uh, check out Crown Bakery, a great spot for a tasty treat. Let's find out more about them right now. Welcome to The Bakery. The Bakery, simply defined as a place for making bread. It's an art form that's been around since ancient Egypt. Hey, but today we are not in Egypt. We're in Oka, Minnesota at Crown Bakery. They do so much more than just make bread. So Crown is a Nordic inspired scratch bakery. We offer lots of Nordic and European offerings and we specialize in gluten free and vegan options. Would you like that slice? I would like it sliced. Today we're hanging out with Sherea and Maddie. Cooking in sweet rolls, bread, dessert items, and also lunch. Um, we have a lot of gluten-free options and vegan options, so I do feel like we have something for everybody. My eyes glaze over as Maddie generously dishes up some delicious sweets, breads, and even soup for lunch. is bread. For the 
recipe, let's head to the typewriter. In its purest form, bread simply consists of flour, water, and yeast. Once ingredients are mixed, you form a dough shape. Once properly rested, you bake in an oven. And presto, you have yourself some bread. Let's get back to Shireya. Yeah, so we have Budapest roll, tiramisu, we serve cupcakes, um, and then we also have lots of different varieties of bread, including limpa, sourdough, Vienna, and more. Like this Budapest roll, for example, that I ate later that afternoon. Delicious. <music> The Crown Bakery is located in the West Main Shopping Center in Anoka. And it's a bakery that's worth checking out. That's our show. Thank you everyone for tuning in to Live and Local Anoka. We will be back with another Live and Local next month. Until then, we want to thank the Rum River Art Center for hosting us today. We want to thank all of our amazing guests and all the people we, uh, we profiled in our, uh, in our segments there. We also wanted to let you know that you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Quad Cities TV. Follow us on Twitter at QCTV. And of course, subscribe to us on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash QCTV. We upload stories from Live and Local, from The Post, from The Chamber Report, all of our programs. Uh, pretty much every day and uh, it's a great place to keep up with us and all of our content. Thank you all for watching and we will see you next time.